So in this chapter, we will look at uh, the mathematical description of vector control. We have already looked at uh, vector control in, uh, in a qualitative way on a physics-based approach in uh, the previous chapter. But in order to uh, simulate uh, this vector control, we need to write equations and then perhaps go to a program like Simulink. So that's the objective of this, uh, this chapter here. <coughs> So uh, we have seen how we can take uh, in an induction, a squirrel cage induction machines, uh, machine with uh, six coupled windings, we can convert it into uh, you know, two sets of uh, two windings each, one on D axis and one on Q axis, as you see over here. And, uh, but in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to align this D axis to the rotor flux linkage. So rotor flux linkage axis and d-axis align. <clears throat> so if that is the case, then uh, you know this uh, the rotor flux linkage in the q-axis is zero. And uh, <clears throat> since we are actively trying to keep it uh, aligned with d-axis and therefore lambda rq to zero, and also since this rotor is a short circuit scroll cage, it's not hard to imagine that the time rate of change of that uh, the uh, Q-axis rotor flux is zero. <clears throat> and uh, so we had derived in chapter three this equation for lambda RQ. And if you equate this to zero, then we can express IRQ in terms of ISQ. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do is to find uh, omega DA. Uh, so that's the, if here's the, uh, you know, your rotor A axis, and here is, uh, uh, the d-axis over here, then we need to know uh, where this d-axis is. Uh, so, uh, because, uh, uh, well, uh, we need to put that d-axis from the rotor flux linkage, and uh, therefore we need to calculate this omega dA here. <clears throat> so, how do we calculate that? Well, let's look at, uh, let's take a look at the, the voltage equation for VRQ given in this form here. And we saw earlier that uh, when lambda RQ is zero, uh, we have uh, uh, IRQ in terms of ISQ. And so we wanna replace this IRQ here with uh, this equation here. And uh, this term here is uh, zero that we saw earlier. So we can find omega DA here in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in terms of IRQ and lambda RD here. And then if you define this uh, rotor time constant, then we can write it in this form here. So it uh, omega dA is in terms of uh, ISQ and lambda RD we are keeping constant. <clears throat> the next thing we'll do is uh, uh, we'll estimate uh, how much electromagnetic torque is being generated. So in, again, in chapter three, we derived this equation here. <clears throat> and here, if lambda RQ is zero, then it reduces to this equation. And if you substitute for IRQ from this equation here, then we can express it in terms of ISQ, this torque here. <clears throat> so we immediately see that uh, uh, if you want to change electromagnetic torque, for example, as a step, and you keep lambda RD constant, then this electromagnetic torque is basically related to ISQ by a constant. <clears throat> All right, so it is possible to change the flux in the D axis, uh, in, in flux weakening mode, for example. So it's uh, useful to look at that equation as well to make this analysis more general. Uh, so if you look at uh, the voltage equation for rotor D axis, we, we have this equation here. And if it's a squirrel cage machine, then VRD is zero. And this, you know, this lambda RQ is zero because, uh, you know, D axis is aligned with the rotor flux. Uh, linkage. So we have this equation here. And uh, so what we see here <clears throat> is that we have uh, IRD. And this IRD, we want to re uh, replace that uh, in, in terms of lambda RD by using this equation here. And of course, this time constant. So when you use this equation here and calculate IRD and substitute that for IRD over here, we get this equation here. <clears throat> And uh, if you express that in Laplace transform uh, manner, then we have uh, this equation where 
lambda rd is a function uh, is related to isd with this transfer function here. <clears throat> so now we are ready to uh, develop a, an estimated motor model and which is shown in this diagram over here. And again, some of the main equations are uh, you know, repeated. So lambda rd, this we uh, described uh, in the uh, previous uh, slide. Omega dA we had calculated earlier and the electromagnetic torque we had calculated earlier here. So we can take all these three equations and see what happens. So ISD and ISQ are inputs. Omega mechanical is input. <clears throat> so using this top equation here and this transfer function here gives us lambda RD. And uh, so if you multiply that by rotor time constant, we get this denominator. D is denominator for calculating omega dA. So this denominator here is calculated by multiplying lambda rd to uh, rotor time constant. <clears throat> and in the numerator, we have lm times isq, which is isq times lm. So, <clears throat> so we get that. <clears throat> so that, <coughs> excuse me, that will give us omega dA, this quantity here. And then if you take, measure the mechanical speed, for example, through an encoder <coughs> and multiply it by a pole pair, that gives us uh, omega m, <coughs> excuse me. And if you add omega m to omega d a, we get omega d. And if you assume that uh, <coughs> at time t equal to zero, uh, you know, the rotor flux linkage is along uh, phase winding A, and uh, and we are aligning D axis with the rotor flux linkage, then uh, <clears throat> just integrating this from here, we get theta dA. So as you can see, <clears throat> in this estimated motor model, we have lambda RD coming out, we have theta dA, which we need for transformation matrices, and also this torque, electromagnetic torque here. <clears throat> So this uh, is the, the block diagram. And uh, uh, perhaps we could stop here. But it shows that uh, you know, if, if you are doing the uh, position control, you have a outermost loop where you have reference position. And you are you know, measuring this position. <coughs> And the difference of the two, and here it turns out only a proportional gain is enough, is giving us the reference speed. And uh, you compare that with actual measured speed, and the error goes into this PI controller, which we'll design, and it gives you the electromagnetic torque reference. And then uh, <clears throat> we compare that with the, the calculated electromagnetic torque, which is coming out of here. And the difference of these two goes into a PI controller, and that gives us the reference current for ISQ. <clears throat> and uh, you know, for ISD reference, uh, we perhaps should start with Omega Mechanical, which we measure. And uh, you know, there may be uh, a flux weakening at uh, speeds beyond the rated speed. So we have this kind of a plot. But the bottom line is that it gives us the the reference for lambda rd and we compare that with lambda rd which is calculated over here and the error goes into another pi controller <coughs> and we get the reference for uh, stator d axis current so th these two inputs and uh, the rotor uh, i'm sorry the the angle of uh, d axis is with respect to the stator a axis theta da then is used to have this transformation, which gives us uh, you know, these three reference currents, IA, IB, and IC. And uh, then if you use a current regulated power, po uh, power processing unit, <coughs> where we, knowing these reference currents and a small hysteresis band around it, we do the switching in a, in a power electronics converter. That gives us the actual currents, uh, IA and IB and IC which are then fed to this motor over here. And then there's an encoder, and then we measure the, the incremental 
motion, theta mechanical, and we multiply, and we differentiate that, which gives us the speed here. So, so you can see that this uh, is a, uh, you know, one, one good way to uh, up, obtain uh, vector control, where, for example, the load torque were to change the step, and we want to make a step change in uh, electromagnetic torque in order to keep speed constant, well, this may be a very good way to do it. So one thing we need here is to calculate, uh, uh, let's say we have, we want to keep the speed uh, at its uh, initial value, even when there's a step change in, change in uh, load torque. <clears throat> but we need to calculate the, the, the constants for the proportional gain and the integral gain here. So you can see that uh, we have this input speed uh, reference and that uh, <coughs> actual me mechanical speed. Uh, and it may be that we want to keep this constant and we may want to change it, whatever. But uh, the difference of these two uh, acts on this PI controller, which gives you the, the current uh, uh, stereoid Q axis current. And so here we should uh, take a look how uh, this and the electromagnetic torque are related. So let's just uh, step back a little bit. Uh, we, we know that uh, in steady state, uh, and uh, we are designing this controller around an equilibrium, equilibrium pound, point that it is in steady state. So in steady state, uh, lambda RD is just nothing but, uh, you know, L sub M times ISD. <clears throat> and ISD, you know, we know it's uh, some reference current as shown in the earlier diagram, and that shows up uh, from uh, from these two equations over here, okay? And uh, b basically from this equation, when the all in steady state or at some equilibrium point, when all the transients are died out, this lambda RD is nothing but this LM times ISD. So this equation here, <clears throat> and then uh, we had derived this equation for electromagnetic torque, uh, with uh, dx is aligned with the rotor flux linkage. So here we substitute for lambda rd and we get this equation here. So here you can see that all this, all these quantities here, uh, they are constant. So electromagnetic torque, as earlier we indicated, is proportional to ISQ. <clears throat> all right, so with that, uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, make this simulation using Simulink and uh, using a current regulated PWM control. So current regulated uh, converter here is uh, shown by a unity gain here. So whatever we're assuming that whatever is demanded in terms of currents for ABC phases, uh, you know, those, phase, those currents are supplied here. So nothing but unity. <clears throat> so using this uh, uh, simulation, uh, we get, uh, you know, let's say there's a low torque disturbance at this time, the load torque goes uh, as a step to some value here, okay? And you wanna keep the speed constant. So initial speed is over here. So there will be some, uh, you know, transient and electromagnetic torque that is generated, which is over here. There'll be some transient in the speed, but eventually it, uh, you know, settles down to the original speed over here, as you can see here. So, so I, I think we should stop here. Uh, what uh, what we have done is to uh, show vector control using current regulated uh, uh, PWM. Uh, you know, it's a it's a very good approach. Uh, the only problem here is that the switching frequency doesn't remain constant, and sometimes that is uh, uh, deemed uh, not to be desirable. Okay, so we will see how we can do the same thing by uh, keeping the switching frequency constant. So that will be the second part of this uh, chapter. So thank you.